Hey guys, I have a question for you. How do you spread abundance? This year, Joe and I are spreading even more abundance by giving out insights on money, wealth strategies, and resources in our current newsletter, Creating Abundance in 52 Weeks, that we want to share with you for free. So sign up right now as you're listening to this episode on our website at www.abundantculture.co. That's .co slash newsletter, www.abundantculture.co slash newsletter. Don't let delay get in the way of your abundant year. Now, back to the episode. Welcome back to Abundant Culture Podcast. Where we dissect the mindsets and tactics of the true beast of business. People like Gary V, Grant Cardone, and Warren Buffett. All to create a blueprint to experience life more abundantly. Hey everybody, it's Joe here. Welcome back to the Abundant Culture Podcast. We're so glad to have you back again this week. This week, we're talking about a subject that I think is super, super cool. We've never talked about it on the podcast before, and it is the topic of online businesses. You have Amazon FBA, drop shipping, Kindle publishing, all these different types of online business models. And today we're going to break down what each of those business models are, how they work. We're going to be talking about SEO and a whole lot more. So get ready to listen to and learn from our good friends, Mike Bruska and Joe Bruska. Hi, Mike and Joey, and thank you again for coming on to the Abundant Culture Podcast. We are super excited to have you today because this is the first time on the podcast we're actually talking about like drop shipping and pretty much anything like online as a business. Um, but before we get into that, we have to ask you, you know, how did you get into business and why did you get into business? Yeah, well, it started in around 2014. I had a corporate job and I was working with a, as, as a food scientist. And Mike was actually still in college at the time. He's a little bit younger than me, by about five years. And I just really was tired of kind of going through the same old routine every day. Um, I actually wanted to be a pro gamer. I was really into playing a game called Dota at the time. And I never actually you know, made that, that dream a realization. Maybe I didn't have the... Uh, the skills or the proper motivation and mindset to do so at the time. But um, so what happened was I had just started exploring like different ways to make, to make up for my income because I just wanted to stop working. So I fell into basically buying, uh, buying stuff and flipping stuff <laughs> on Amazon and eBay. So what happened was, is that, um, yeah, I just started going to clearance sections, Walmart, Walgreens, yard sales, and just getting stuff at a really, really low price and then listing it on, on Amazon and eBay. And I eventually was making enough there to replace my like corporate salary, but in much less time. I was able to do it like maybe like four hours a day. It wasn't fully ideal, but it was still good. So I quit my job and I spent four hours a day doing that and then playing games. And so it evolved from there in many ways because you know Mike got a job. Uh, he didn't want to do his job anymore. He saw what I was doing. And then, Mike, you can you can kind of pick it up from here because this is this is where you come into the story. Yeah, so I saw Joe essentially making money online, and um, I just graduated. I got a chemical engineering degree, and I actually wound up working um, for a Navy contractor, um, BAE Systems. But um, essentially, yeah, the the job was really boring, and you know, I kind of seen what Joe was doing, like I said, and I wanted to travel and I didn't like the idea of, you know, being told when I can't take off and stuff like that. So eventually, you know, I was browsing around for other things to do besides for <clears throat> exactly what Joe was doing. And I came across Kindle publishing. And so I had just decided to really go all in with that. I was basically recycling all of my salary. It's just, you know, trying that business model. And really quickly, I was actually able to have success with it. And I was able to quit my job and Joe had kind of followed suit with doing the Kindle publishing. But shortly thereafter, you know, we built up all these books on Kindle and had all this success and we got hit with a suspension on Amazon. And so they essentially took our previous two months of royalties because it takes two months to get paid on Kindle. And so we were kind of left stuck in a position where we had to figure out another thing to do. And so we had known about drop shipping. We had tried um, some other stores half-heartedly here and there. And so we decided to try again and do a, a high ticket drop shipping store. 
basically focusing on expensive items only. And we really put all of our energy into this for two weeks. And in that two weeks, we went from having nothing to making our first sale. And so at that point, we were pretty sold on that. And, you know, over the last four or five years, you know, what we learned from Kindle Publishing, we still do that. Drop shipping, we still do. And we've also brought in other business models and we've kind of turned everything into really a diversified portfolio of online businesses. And so that's kind of what we teach now. And that's how we approach things. That's really awesome. So I've met a lot of guys who say, oh, drop shipping's the way, FBA's the way. Um, I just heard about this, uh, you know, Kindle um, book publishing thing. We actually um, just heard about it like a couple days before you guys reached yeah. out to us. So it was like meant to be to even talk about on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I've never met somebody who has actually had some success in all these different types of business models. So that brings me to the question, uh, which one of these business models are your favorite or do you not just have favorites or are they some part of some bigger portfolio that kind of needs each and every part of it? So we actually have like a, a free course we give out that basically details our thoughts behind each business model and like how we sort of structure things. But yeah. to give you an answer, I think drop shipping, high ticket drop shipping specifically, is the best way to get started and that's because really it allows you to tap into a system where you can make hundreds or even thousands of dollars per sale and i'm not saying that as some sort of gimmick like we if i don't make a thousand dollars on a sale like i really don't even care about it and there are so basically we go out and we find domestic suppliers basically you know people that have they're bringing products into the u.s themselves they're real u.s brands and we just open up wholesale accounts with them and it allows us to go put them on our website sell it and they just happen to drop ship it. So oh, wow. it's not about the drop shipping. It's about establishing relationships with just US suppliers. And yeah, so with that, you can really, you can drive paid traffic to it, which is really important for getting quick results. And you have enough margin that even if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you can still have success. And so, you know, we work with a lot of students and we see, you know, among all these business models, drop shipping is really the quickest and the easiest for them to actually start making money online. Whereas with Kindle, you know, you can actually, you can make a, your first dollar really quick with Kindle. Like if you go put up a trivia book on Kindle tomorrow, you'll, you'll make a sale. You'll make that first dollar, but it's not going to get you where you want to be quickly. Dropshipping is really the quickest way to like a thousand dollars a month, $2,000 a month, etc. So that's why we choose that. But <clears throat> everything else kind of lends itself to like diversification and more, more passivity. Awesome. Okay. Cool. If and, I could add to that, actually, yeah, uh, we, we have made big efforts to connect our businesses. So one of the other types of businesses we do is we have what's called content sites or like blogs, which is like the most familiar uh, way that people, people reference it. So we actually have, you know, like a blog that gets traffic from Google that will send people from the blog to our dropshipping site. Mm -hmm. um, and that blog is powered by, or it gets a lot of traffic with search engine optimization. So part of the reason why we went into different business models online is because we knew big picture, there's a lot of room to connect things. Mike mentioned paid traffic when it comes to a drop shipping store and paid traffic is, is awesome because you can just turn it on and turn it off. And it's like a, it's like a faucet. It's like the, by far in any business online, it's the fastest way to, to get results. But there's also like a long-term play with like search engine optimization. And we even have a, a site that gets a lot of search engine traffic that links to some of our Kindle books as well. So, you know, it just, we've all, we've been progressively putting the pieces together of online businesses and, and experimenting with different ways to get traffic and you know, diff different ways to, to get income. But yeah, like Mike said, just because of the nature of how dropshipping works and because you can power it with paid traffic because the margins are so high, you know, cause you can spend 50, 60, a hundred dollars to make a sale where you make a thousand dollars. That's a, that's a no brainer, but that that's why it's so powerful, but it, there is a place for the other stuff. And we talked about that in our free course that Mike mentioned that we kind of view it as a pyramid. Like you, you could start with drop shipping, start making profit fast and then reinvest it in, into other things. So that's kind of our philosophy. Awesome. Yeah, that is very, very awesome. And for the listeners that don't know what drop shipping is, can one of you explain, you know, exactly like just what drop shipping is real quick? Yeah. So really in reality, it's just a method of fulfillment. It just means that, the customer is going to get the item directly from the manufacturer. And so that can be broken down into multiple other things. And many people who do know of drop shipping know of it in the sense of going on a website like AliExpress or 
some sort of supplier directory and just finding products that you can try and sell and then running traffic to those through like Facebook ads or, or something like that. And we, that's not what we do. We're actually really against that. We found a lot of people just lose money doing that. It's very hard to achieve success for the reasons that we mentioned. You don't have the high margins. You don't have the Google ads that you can run to brands that already have search volume, brands that already have demand and just make sales like that. Usually you're doing some sort of social traffic like Facebook or Pinterest ads. And it's a lot more complicated and it's a lot more about, you know, having like a winning product and going viral and things that actually for the majority of people never really work. Absolutely. And I, I like the way that you guys kind of think about things because we talked on the phone before and you mentioned how you try to make these businesses really sustainable. I think everybody would like to have that one product that goes viral. But if you're going to base a whole business model off of that, I don't think that's necessarily the smartest thing to do. So the fact that you're looking at it from a sustainable standpoint, I think makes this a very viable route to profitability for a lot of people. Because like you said, not you know every single you know, product or anything like that is actually going to go viral. Another question I had was, could you explain a little bit about how the Kindle publishing works? Mm -hmm. And before I get to that, I want to touch on that last point you made. Yeah, everyone kind of envisions their success as like going viral, having this great moment where all of a sudden you make, you make a lot of money. And like we said, that doesn't really work for the majority of people. It's not going to happen to you. It's like going to the casino and you know, getting that blackjack and all of a sudden, you know, you're rich. But yeah. in reality, what we do is it is more sustainable and more people can have success with it, but you can still have that nearly viral moment because everything that we do, it builds towards something that you can sell. People don't realize that these businesses, these dropshipping businesses, these Kindle businesses, these affiliate marketing, SEO based websites, you can sell all of these for like a, a big multiple of their monthly profit, usually between 20 and 40 times what it makes. And so if you could just figure out how to do something, how to build a sustainable business, you can go and sell it for 30 times what it makes, makes you a month, have that viral moment, and then just go and do it again. Wow. And so it's actually, it's really a win-win. There's no point in going viral. You can't sell a viral business. It's just going to be one temporary moment of cash and then it's done. Yeah. But so what was your question on Kindle? Yeah, just uh, kind of explain that process because uh, we talked about drop shipping, uh, getting, you know, basically getting something direct from the supplier. But I think this Kindle publishing thing is something that, like I said, I, I haven't heard about until like basically, I think a couple weeks ago or something like that. Well, before we um, get more into the Kindle book publishing side of it, um, what are some examples of the high ticket items that you guys recommend for drop oh, shipping or like question. just what you've seen people doing and what works for you? Compared to other people out there, I'll give you examples of th some things that we might sell. But you know, you, when you go online and you search for like, what can I sell with drop shipping or like, we are really, really against like those type of niche lists or whatever you want to call them or like product ideas, but just to, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but just to give an example of what we might sell, maybe like a, like a kitchen Island, something like that, something big, something where there can be a lot of unique variations to it. So yeah, that's, that's that. But the reason why we actually don't, we tell people how to find products, but we don't actually give like product specific things because what happens is when you do that, uh, ex excuse my language, I'm not going to swear, but Mike likes to refer to it as, as sloppy seconds. So you don't want to get into something where it's like public, even though you can succeed at that stuff, when you learn to do your own research on it, it's, it's way, way better. And we, we detail a lot how to do that. But Kitchen Islands, I think is, um, is a really good example of the type of thing that we might look at. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Big expensive items like, you know, like sofas or what have you. But the thing is we've made so many stores and we make big stores with a lot of products. Like we've sold so many things and we have students that have sold so many things. So it's really a lot easier than people think. And it, it has less to do with the product itself. It's easy. It's easy to find expensive products. It has more to do with the suppliers. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you know, in our courses, we detail like all of how to actually get good suppliers, how to find hidden products and, and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it really works itself out once you take the action, but to go back to Kindle publishing, we do Kindle publishing. And so what we mainly do is fiction books. And the reason we do this 
is because with nonfiction, even though people do well with it, it's a bit harder to manage because people will come, they'll buy a nonfiction book and they'll just read probably one or two books on a particular topic. Yeah. You know, but with fiction, it's like watching Netflix. It's like watching a TV show that you like. Every time there's a new season, you're going to go and you're, you're going to binge watch all those episodes. But yeah. so with fiction, you can basically build an audience that every time you put out a book, they're going to buy it and read it. And so it's a lot more sustainable. It's a lot more of a long-term play to be able to just put out a fiction book. Now you can build an email list. And every time you put out a new book, you just send the email list to the book and you can keep growing your following that way. Because even, you know, you find a show on the fifth season, you go back and you watch everything up until that point. Right. And so it all kind of builds up and builds up and builds up where you can't do that with nonfiction. Absolutely. That makes a lot so of sense. with these books, is it like, so are people buying these books from you? How, how does the business model kind of run with that? Are you, are you actually creating these books or how does that work? So we're really just the publishers. We pay people to write them. We pay people to edit them. We pay cover designers. Really what we're doing, what we teach people to do is figure out how to actually come up with an idea of a book that's going to sell. Everything else you can outsource. You can't outsource like the exact vision of the book because authors can't really come up with it for you. It's a difference between a best-seller, a best-selling publisher and someone who has no success. Hmm. It's making sure that like the the themes are are on point, the way the cover looks is on point so that, you know, when it's up on Kindle, the people on Kindle that see it are going to buy it you know, your audience is going to gravitate to it. It's called writing to market or publishing to market. It's not about, you know, what you want. It's about really tapping into what the audience wants. And so that's your main skill as the publisher and everything else we just kind of have everyone do. So that's really cool. I didn't know that you can basically come up with a book idea and then almost outsource every other facet of actually producing that book and bringing it to market. So are you hiring like VAs to do that? Like outsourcing to VAs for the writing? So the person that writes the book is called a ghostwriter. You know, I wouldn't call that a VA. You can find, it's, it's really just a writer that is willing to just get a flat fee for the book and then you get the rights. And so people always ask, you know, like, why would they do this? And it's a pretty simple reason. They want the guaranteed money. We're putting ourselves at risk by paying for a book that we may never sell a copy of. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a common thing for writers to do that. And yeah, you know, the editor is just an editor. Like we go on Upwork for these things. You can go elsewhere, Indeed or, you know, Craigslist. And then for other things, we use VAs, like other things within the nitty gritty Kindle operation, we do VAs. But, you know, even in our affiliate marketing websites and our dropshipping stores, we use a lot of virtual assistants and just regular customer service employees as well. But to go back to actually how you get paid with Kindle, people are buying the book, but also on Amazon, you have what's called Kindle Unlimited. And so it's actually a subscription program that Kindle offers where they can download books for free that are on the Kindle Unlimited program. And so you, as the publisher, if your book is enrolled in that, you get paid for every page that someone reads. And so when you're putting out a lot of books and you know, it's, novel or novella length, then you can actually make a decent amount of money off of someone coming and reading your book. And then again, they're going to go back if they like you and read the whole catalog. And so you can build and build and build the amount of value you can get from just one customer. That's awesome. And so like when you get paid per page, is it based on anything or is it just like a flat rate that you guys get paid or how does that work? Yeah. So Kindle or, you know, Amazon, at the end of every month, we'll say, okay, this is how much money we had from uh, Kindle Unlimited, from all the subscribers. We had this many pages read, right? So yeah. it's just kind of a, they just divide that and determine, you know, what the dollar amount per page read is. It's usually like a half a cent mm-hmm. per page. Yeah. Okay. But that can definitely start to add up. Right. Yeah. I mean, so we put out like box sets and you can do a really big box set and I forget what the acronym stands for, but like page reads in Kindle, it's called uh, K-E-N-P or Kemp. It's like Kindle something normalized pages. And so you have every book you have has what's called a K-E-N-P-C. So it's a normalized page count. And the max K-E-N-P-C you can have is 3,000. So you can say, okay, the book is 3,000 pages long on Kindle. Mm-hmm. So anything that's longer than that, 3,001, 5,000, you're only going to get paid for 3,000 pages. Okay. And so we have books that basically max that out. So if someone reads through that entire book, 3,000 times a half a cent, that's $15. Just oh. for someone to download your book for free and read it. 
Mm-hmm. That's really and on top of that, they might send them to your list. They might read your other content. And so this is just, it's, you know, you talked about FBA before. We like this a lot better than FBA because you don't need to rely on these suppliers from China. You don't need to rely on, you know, buying all this inventory, making sure it comes in, making sure it's packaged, all these uh, logistical issues that can come along when you can just put out a digital product and get paid $15 profit and royalties for it. So that's our philosophy. That's really cool. Yeah. This is really exciting. Um, so how about, can you guys talk to us about like how the SEO works? I've been like kind of studying it a little bit, but like, I feel like the further I go into studying SEO, the the more it seems like it's just too much information. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's actually, it is a lot of information, but before we get into the nitty gritty details, um, you have to figure out why you're doing SEO. So if you don't have a good reason behind why you're doing it, you shouldn't do it. And what I mean by reason is that if you're going to spend the time to rank your site or rank an indiv- individual page in Google for whatever search term, uh, it better have a high return for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can, a lot of people, when they think about SEO, uh, a lot of SEOs become obsessed with the ranking position in Google. They can become obsessed with, oh, I'm rank one for this keyword, or, you know, I want to get rank one for this because it has so much search volume. But in reality, you have to be thinking about what's going to make you the most money. And is it worth, is it going to be worth the effort to get that ranking? So that's the first thing you want to think about. And if you can't properly answer that question, then you shouldn't be doing SEO. So when it, well, uh, now let's, I guess we can talk about some of the details. When it comes to ranking a page in Google, it comes down to, I guess you can say two or three main things. So it's the title of the content along with the meta title, yada, yada, yada. So the title, like the H1 tag and the meta title, which is the, if you have like Yoast SEO on WordPress or you know platforms like Shopify will have that built in. That's gonna be whatever keyword or key phrase you have in there, Google is going to start to think like, okay, this page is about this. If someone searches, if someone searches this, I might consider showing this page. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is backlinks. So links from other websites to your site. And that's going to help if you're going after a keyword that's competitive. So say, for example, you, you wanted to go after a keyword like best business podcast. You would probably have a very, very hard time ranking for this because, you yeah. know, there's pro- all the pages on page one probably have a ton of backlinks. Yeah. yeah. But if you wanted to go after, hmm, I got to think of one off the top of my head. Uh, best business podcast for, not. The, I'll think of one that you guys might not go after. But if it was like best business podcast for like, like aspiring, bakery. like what'd you say? Like maybe bakeries or something exactly, like that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You might have a, a much easier time ranking for that without any backlinks at all. So yeah, you have to really examine what's the benefit of me ranking for this keyword? Is the juice going to be worth the squeeze? And what is the journey going to be? Because some keywords are just so, you have to put so much time to rank for them that you're better off just focusing on the smaller stuff and then worrying about the big stuff later. So SEO is really like a marathon, but prioritizing what you want to rank for, probably more important than any of the technical stuff you could think of. Yeah, and that's kind of why when we do SEO for a lot of our sites, we start out by going after these really long tail phrases. So yeah, maybe you know maybe you can rank for best business podcast for bakeries. And then once you start ranking for that, or say you know you, you put out a bunch of articles or whatever, for long tail of kind of best business podcast for articles. Now some of those start ranking. Now you have traffic coming into some of those articles. And before you know it, you know, you may get a backlink off that. You may, you know, be getting more visitors and now, you know, Google sees that and they may reward you for that traffic. And so it all kind of snowballs into each other. And yeah, trying to rank for something that's super competitive. A lot of people try and do that out of the gate and they just fail because they don't have results. We're all about doing things that are going to get results the quickest and the easiest and then building off of that. So yeah, the the long tail stuff is where it's at starting out. Interesting. Yeah. So then the backlinks, um, does that mean like they're coming from this specific page or what exactly is a backlink? A backlink is just literally a link, like a hypertext link that if you click it, it goes to your site. That's all a backlink is. Okay. So like if I go on my site, buildassetsonline.com, and then I link to like Home Depot or something, I say, visit Home Depot, click here. That's a backlink to Home Depot. Um, oh, okay. If 
that makes sense. That, that's all a backlink is. So backlinks are one of those things in SEO that you can kind of get overwhelmed about because I don't know how much detail you want, you want to get into here, <laughs> but there, there are some industries where backlinks are far more important than others. There's a lot of way backlinks can be abused and there are people that have very specialized skill sets in abusing them in some, in some industries like like for example, in some, I guess what you can call gambling. If you want to rank for like best best online casino, uh, there's going to be a lot of like competition in terms of like fake backlinks going on on the on the the front page and stuff like that. So if you're if you're looking to build, it, it, it depends on your strategy is going to depend on your business. But if you're trying to build a long sustainable business, there's really no reason to obsess about backlinks too much because they should come naturally. Like for example, I'm going on this podcast right now and I don't know if I'm going to get a backlink from it, but definitely other podcasts we go on, not only do we get to go on the podcast, but people will leave a link to build assets online, like in their show notes or whatever. So just by doing that, by doing normal business activities, I was able to get a backlink. And what, like what Mike said, if you're putting out content about you know, if I was a, a putting out a page on like a nuanced way to make money on it, maybe I put a page, I actually do have a page like this, like five ways to make money on Amazon without an investment. That's the type of page where maybe someone's doing research on that and they find my blog post in Google and then they'll reference my blog post. And that happens all the time on our SEO sites. I mean, we get some pretty big links from, from like bustle.com, um, delish.com. Like these are just some backlinks that I've gotten like naturally just without having to do anything. So that's, that's really, I think, where having a long-term sustainable SEO vision comes in is understanding what you can rank for quickly, maximizing that, and then kind of letting it ride over time, just doing normal business activities like outreach, going on podcasts, you know, stuff like that. So then um, you guys also mentioned that you have like the content, like blog pages. So with that, are you getting paid to post other people's backlinks in like your articles or how does that work? No, well, that's, that's a bit of, um, no, we're not, we're not doing that. That is one way that people might acquire backlinks, but on our sites, we're just posting content. Okay. And we're, that we're posting content as such that it ranks in Google quickly. And then we will sometimes go out and try and acquire backlinks Mm -hmm. to get links to our site that will help us rank better in Google. So we can go out and acquire those by reaching out to people and like saying, like asking if they want to collaborate or something, or those links will come in naturally. Like I said, like the example I gave before on buildassetsonline.com, I have that article about five ways to make money on Amazon without investment. And this type of stuff will happen where say someone on Forbes, one of their reporters is doing like a a piece on online business. They'll oftentimes search for like long tail phrases like that, find an article like that one, and then reference your site in that article. So there's lots of different ways to acquire backlinks, but I guess I, guess, I hope that kind of explains the flow of it more. Yeah. There's, mm-hmm. there's so many different strategies, but that's what we try and do is like the long-term sustainable stuff where we're going after stuff where we're going to rank quickly. But not only that, by ranking quickly for obscure phrases, you get a lot more natural backlinks. And those are the best ones because when you, if you try and cheat the system, you know, there's a lot of like called black hat SEO. People will try and just get a million backlinks from like fake sites. And again, that might be, that might work in, in some circumstances, but it's for, for us, that's never really been a long-term approach. Absolutely. So if somebody wants to get started in any online business whatsoever, what should be their first steps in getting started? Uh, well, I mean, you could, uh, <laughs> we, we actually have a free course, the online asset playbook, uh, buildassetsonline.com slash playbook, where we break down the business models, uh, how we prefer to do it. We recommend starting with, with drop shipping for most people because you can get that money quickly, but you'll see when we break down the business first. So I guess to answer your question, it starts with understanding like understanding what you want to do, your goals, and what business model you're going to use to achieve those goals. And I think that's where we like to think that we stand out because because we've done so many different things. Yeah. Um, we'll oftentimes take a look at an individual. So say someone joins our membership group, we have like a, where you can get like, we have like a, th- a discord where you can get a private membership group with us. So you get like a one-on-one channel. And then, so we have someone that might tell us, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a single mom, I'm working 80 hours, I have some money to reinvest. Uh, we might tell them, hey, the best path for you because of your schedule, invest this much every month into building a Kindle business. 
we might have someone else that tells us, Hey, I need to make money, you know, really quickly. You know, I'm kind of not doing much. I don't really have many obligations or, you know, I don't have any money to reinvest. We'll tell them, okay, build a dropshipping store. So it really just depends on the situation. For most people, a dropshipping is, is the best way to get started in our opinion. But again, that's why we like to really take a look at where everyone's at, what their experience is. But yeah, do you have anything to add to that, Mike? I don't know if I... No, you pretty much touched on it. Yeah, just go to buildassetsonline.com slash playbook. You can check out our philosophies and how we, how we talk about having a diversified portfolio. And then from there, you can choose your path, your journey. So awesome. that's it. Uh, so we've gone over so much today, like literally so much. Like I, I wish I would have known how dense this material was beforehand because I probably would have structured it a little bit better. But for you guys, when it comes to just overall business online, I guess what would be the number one takeaway you would want somebody to get from this podcast episode in regards to really running an online company? Yeah. So I would say really, I, I, we were talking about this in the membership last week is that two people can be given essentially the same niche, the same domain name, the same website, the same suppliers and everything. And the outcomes can be completely different. The only thing that matters is your execution and your willingness to make something work. Mm -hmm. And so we see it time and time again, where a lot of people just stop themselves from having success, maybe because I don't know, they, they don't believe they can do it or they get nervous about things. And so really the main takeaway is don't get in the way of yourself. You need to just take action, especially if you're new to this. You need to just dive in. Don't blow all your money or anything, but you know you need to get that firsthand experience. You yeah. can't be afraid, especially if you're starting from nothing. So Absolutely. definitely that's the first part of it. And the second part, which goes hand in hand with that, is you need to follow a guided system, if at all possible. Trying to blaze your own trail and go off of free content is really a recipe for disaster yeah. because there's so many different conflicting ideas out there and mm -hmm. it's just it's it's just not gonna be a good use of your time. You yeah. know, you should value yourself and your time enough to invest in something that will actually give you a step by step formula to getting from where you are now to where you want to be. And I don't want to say that as a promotion for our courses. We think our courses are good, but it's any piece of content that you need to pay for because one, it's going to give your, you know, it's going to be skin in the game for you. Free content is free content. But if you pay for something, that means you're more likely to take it seriously. You're more likely to follow through with it. And the content itself is more likely to be structured in a way that can get you from point A to point B. Joe and I have invested tens and tens of thousands of dollars into online education. And so anyone looking to get anywhere in their online business journey should do the same. Absolutely. But make sure he, like he said, execution is, is everything. You have to be very careful because a lot of people who, and we we're, we're victim of this as well. When you invest in, in education, a lot of people will invest and then not act on it. So if you invest in something, you know, like Mike said, execution is everything. So you just be ready to commit and to act on it. And if things get difficult, you know, things are not going as fast as you want or something goes wrong. Like you cannot let that discourage you. That is the main thing. And that's one of the beauties of online business is that it's such low risk, you know, like in comparison to physical location, especially in, in the volatile environment that we see today, you have virtually no overhead in an online business. So best formula that we've followed and that we've seen success with is whenever we do a new business model, we'll invest in a course. We will say, we're not doing anything else. Until we go through this course and execute it fully, we'll see how it turns out and we'll, we'll test and we'll tweak from there, start putting our own spin on things. And that's really how we've been able to learn so much and, 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 and kind of connect all these pieces is just by going through that process. Mm. Absolutely. And I think that point of execution is very, very crucial for people to understand because there's been people who spent more money than me on education. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on my, you know, self-development and education as well. But there's been people that spend around that same amount of money and they get kind of immersed in the idea of the thing and not actually doing the thing. So I think both is very correct. Invest the money to learn, but also invest the time to actually implement what you actually learn. 
Mm-hmm. I think it's a good yeah. recipe. And yeah. I also love the point that you touched on about like the free content only being free content yeah. uh, because like, you know, most of the time free content, like there isn't, it's not that step-by-step process and there's always something missing to like hook the person into, you know, the, the sales funnel basically. And even if it's not, even if you give them everything, then they're probably not even going to take it serious because like last month, Joe and I gave away our course for free for two weeks and we look at, you know, like the results and who all took the course already. And not one person has even gotten to like 25% of the course yet. Like there's actually a lot of people that didn't even look at it at all yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not like charging money is not just for your benefit. It's for their benefit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People will not take things seriously if it's free. And yeah, yeah it, can be, it can be the greatest thing in the world. But psychologically, we do not assign value to things that are free because it's just, it's just abundant. And going back to what you were saying, Joe, yeah. Like the idea of making a lot of money or, you know, getting this course and it's going to solve all my problems. Like that's a huge dopamine hit. Yeah. And people just can spend years getting high off the dopamine hits of just <laughs> buying courses. And then yeah. when it comes down to actually doing the work, then those emotions start to go away and now it's actually getting hard and that's where people give up. Yeah. But in reality, like you need to completely untrain your brain. Like when we have to buy a course, honestly, I get really upset about it, but I know that we have to buy it to get to where we want to go. It's not like, that emotional dopamine response anymore. Yeah. And so yeah, it's it's definitely something we went through and I know others experience it. Yeah. yeah. It's and, like and bringing, go ahead. No, sorry. I was going to say it's like bringing home like a huge, awesome, like, like a, like a saw or something like, and you're going to make this huge wood project with it. And it's like yes. $3,000 saw and you're ready to really dive in. You have the, the blueprints. And then when it comes, it gets in your garage. And it's like, man, do I want to start that today? <laughs> right. Nah, nah, I'll wait. I'll wait till tomorrow. And then you know the the hit of getting the this thing wears off. So that's that's the trap. You got to be yeah. aware of that. So yeah. And the reason I was laughing is because it's so true. Like after spending so much money on my like education I, and implementing a lot of it, not all of it, but definitely a lot of it. I remember like a couple months ago, I bought this course and it was only 25 bucks. Like it was like yeah. super cheap, 25 bucks, but it, it seemed like a super valuable course, but I postponed, I kept postponing when I was going to like actually go through the course. And then I got through half of it and then I stopped for a little while. And then when I tried to go back to it, the course wasn't even offered anymore. I don't even think the website was up. So it was like, it was only 25 <laughs> bucks, but it's still like, man, like if I had to spend more money on it, I know for a fact I would have been invested into actually finishing, but I didn't. Never yeah, did. yeah, yeah. So whether it be in, you're, you're on the Abundant Culture podcast, so we love to ask this question to any and everybody who comes on as a guest. And it's, uh, whether it's in your personal life or in your business, how do you guys like to spread abundance in your life? Whatever well, that means to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I, I feel like I'm on this journey to, when you're flying in the plane and they always make that announcement, they say like, when the oxygen mask comes down, be sure to secure your oxygen mask uh, before you secure the other person's. So I have, lately I've been really reflecting on, you know, I don't want to do online business forever because I mean, it's, it's great and we're having a ton of fun, but at the end of the day, like I want to do something bigger that has like more of an impact. So right now, even though it's not impacting other people, I am like trying to learn a lot about hydroponics and greenhouses and stuff like that, because I would like to see and maybe be a part of more of a widespread use of, you know, more sustainable food supply where people can have access in their own homes and stuff like that. So I kind of want to use the the, the funds and the resources and the business experience, you know, as part of my long-term vision to, to do something positive in that light. So that's, uh, I guess that's, that's my, that's my vision. I know it's not, I'm not spreading it too much right now. But I mean, on the business side of it, I do, we, we do make extra effort to, if someone asks us, we, we go through extra effort to like help someone else succeed. But you know, that's, that's, I mean, a, that's you, you have a free course. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. more than most people give. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna take it. <laughs> you help me. <laughs> we do try and make our stuff on, on our podcasts uh, really informative as well. I mean, yeah, it's not going to be a step by step, do this, do this, do this. Cause uh, that takes the reason why our courses are expensive is because it's been years of our lives in 
culmination to to develop them and to to put them in in a thing that someone can consume like that took a lot of energy and it takes a lot of work yeah. but the content that we do make on uh you know, for free i think is really 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 valuable yeah. but to kind of go off of what joe says you know we we do try and provide a lot of value whether it's you know even someone who's only paying us 47 dollars a month for our coaching like we'll hop on calls with them well you know because we can see that they're hungry to succeed and so it's not always about you know whether the the time and value ratio is at the level you want it to be or whatever it is about helping people and you know that's why we're on this podcast and that's why we do a lot of what we do whether it's even through you know, having employees that were able to fund their life. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I didn't realize going in, like how big of an impact that actually has, you know, being able to create jobs, not being a consumer of a job. Yeah. And on top of that, you know, we had, we did a podcast yesterday with, um, you know, our cousin who's actually, he owns a store with us and his store does really well. And so, you know, he actually didn't have to get a job out of college. He did this in college and then just went head on into drop shipping and online business as soon as he graduated. And it's also cool to see that like he now has friends that are following him and he's kind of teaching them how to do it. And so you, you see, you know, the knowledge spreading and you know, everything that we've worked years for uh, a lot of people are actually gaining value from it, making money off of it. And so that's uh, that's an interesting thing to observe. That's awesome. Yeah, that is really awesome. And yeah, if you're listening or uh, watching this on YouTube or whatever, like at least take the free online course. I mean, it's free. (laughs) Like uh, at at least do yourself that favor because um, it's it's definitely like I can tell you guys have experiences that most people I've seen gurus that supposedly make millions of dollars off of this don't necessarily have the in-depth experience that you guys have with the different business models. And I think that's really, really cool cool and it's very unique as well Mm -hmm. um so if somebody wants to interview you if they want to work with you or something along those lines how do they actually get into contact with you just go to buildassetsonline.com there you can click contact Uh, that's that's the best way to get in touch with us email buildassetsonline.com you click contact contact us at the top and then it's info at buildassetsonline.com that's the That's the best way. Excellent. Great. So we want to thank you again so much for coming onto the podcast and giving us a wealth of knowledge because we probably have listeners that have never even heard of, you know, drop shipping or a Kindle publishing company. And you just gave them a new idea and I'm sure they'll go watch your free course too, because why not? Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again for coming onto the podcast. Thank, thank you for having us on. So that's all we have for today, folks. I hope you got as much value out of this as we did. Keep in mind, the only way we can improve is through constructive feedback. So remember to rate and review this episode. Also, you are not the only person that needs to know this super valuable information. So be sure to subscribe and share as well. Stay tuned for the next episode. And remember to always spread abundance. Peace.